everyone, this is Mary over here at Images on the Page. Today I'm going to be doing a review for A Grave Talent by Laurie King. Now this is more of a um, mystery novel and it is centers around Kate Martinelli who is a cop in the NYPD and she gets pulled to help this other cop, Hawkins, work on this case that is dealing with someone who is killing children um, up in this kind of remote area kind of up in the woods um, where they've actually decreed up there. They kind of live more like in the Renaissance time, so they have no electricity. They only allow cars to drive through it two days a week. No like telephone wires, stuff like that. I gave this book a uh, four out of five. I did really enjoy it. One thing that kind of made me grumpy, so I picked it up because it is on. it was on a list of lesbian mysteries and it was like really highly rated. And so I was like, hey, why not? I'll give it a shot. And at first I was really grumpy because, so it's told kind of third person limited perspective. So it's told in the beginning mostly from the perspective of either Kate Martinelli, the main character, or Hawkins, her partner. But so Kate is um, a lesbian. And like through the first whole third of the book, um, we only know her partner's name and it's Lee and Kate never talks about her partner and never like alludes to their gender and like never really even talks about her home life. And at first this made me really, really grumpy because I was just like, really? Like, are we going to do this? Like, you want it to be a big reveal? Like, surprise? But then as I kind of kept reading, um, it felt more like that was done purposely not for like to make it a big surprise or to keep it hidden, but more because Kate Martinelli in and her, of herself is a very private person. She doesn't talk about her home life to any to anyone on the force. <clears throat> she doesn't bring it up. She like talks about nothing in her personal life. And so the writing style, like in the beginning, definitely reflects that. It is very distancing, it is very separated, and it is very much like us just kind of watching these things happen. And as the book progresses, the writing style of itself makes you feel like you are becoming closer to Kate as Kate starts to open up. So that actually was kind of a really interesting thing as the story progressed, the fact that that happens, um, or at least that it feels like that happens. Um, one thing that I wasn't the biggest fan of is kind of the jump in time. Now that's, it, I don't mean that they jump from like, present day to past day in a flashback, but they'll, there's like, so, there'll be like something going on. Like a quick example is like, they broke down this door to try to catch this person who they thought was guilty of the murders. And then it's like present time. And then there'll be a random sentence, like right afterwards being like, oh, but it didn't pan out. Or, oh, like that person wasn't it. Or they would have to continue searching. And it felt more like it was jumping to the future, but only for like that sentence or two sentences. And that was kind of really confusing. Cause like you're in like the way it's written is kind of more in the moment it is like i mean it's not written in present tense it is written mostly in past tense like it had happened but you still feel very connected to the events of the story and when they do that it just it kind of throws you for a loop a little bit now this book was also very long i was not anticipating how long or how long it would take me to read it it is just, it is very, the writing style is very dense. Um, there are times where it is very, feels very formal. One thing that was kind of interesting was, was how they treated um, one of the characters, her name is Vaughn. Um, her art is kind of treated like it's a, almost like a supernatural entity, like it's a gift or a curse, but something that moves through her is something that she can controls. And I thought that was really an interesting look at like passion and art and creativity and talent was that it was something more that was from outside yourself that is like the world is impacting you in a way that forces you to do these things as opposed to you imagining and creating it on paper. I did really like all the characters. I mean, it wasn't, unfortunately, it wasn't too diverse. Um, as far as I could tell, Kate and um, Hawkins are both white and I think so is Vaughn. And so, I mean, there's... I mean, Hawkins is like one of the few male speaking characters, so that was kind of cool. There's like three and there's like four women, so the women just slightly edged them out, out those guys, but 
it wasn't all that diverse as it could have been. But I did think that the characters were really well developed. They didn't really feel like caricatures of who they could have been. Um, Kate Martinality, Kate Martin, Kate, I'm just gonna say Kate, like is a lesbian cop, but she doesn't, isn't portrayed as like the normal, tough, masculine looking female, which is nothing wrong, but like that is usually the stereotype for, it seems like women who are lesbians in the police force. And like Hawkins can be this gruff guy, but he also seems pretty sensitive and he knows a lot about art. And so they're just very well, richly developed characters. Yeah, for the most part, I gave it a four out of five. It was a little long. I did feel like the first part could have been shortened a little bit because um, it takes us a really long time for them to decide like, oh, this person isn't actually it and to move on to the next person or to the next, next suspect. But I just felt like that could have been maybe sped up a little bit. There are parts where it was just, it felt like it was dragging. And so until the next video, ta-ta for now.